Well, so, all kinds of overspraying paint. Paint, paint, paint all week. It was worth it though. We made some pretty cool things. This is the part journey of the three part process it's gonna take to paint this very small boat. It's very, very tease. Right now why I'm doing this whole rush to paint stuff is because right now is the perfect weather. I don't know if I really told you guys in the other job, but it has to be really good weather. No wind, the perfect temperature, super low humidity, and then that's the best time to do it outside. Otherwise, you need a climate controlled shop with like a really good ventilation system. And the only way, the only people who really have that are professional painters, like my buddy here at Senate John Boats, Chris Simmons. If you're in Georgia, you should take your boat there because it's a serious pain you have to do it yourself. But if you're going to do it yourself, do it like this. a little bit left to go before this is fairly clean we got stupid wind we can't paint can't do anything so might as well just get the rest of this paint off this is aircraft remover slightly different and see ways i think we can speed this process up one is with a brush now I think, I mean, I think this stuff just needs help. Like it takes off an initial layer and then it doesn't go any deeper, but if you kind of scrub this stuff around, but maybe, maybe if I use this brush, I can maybe get deeper in there. Just great A useless at this point. Yeah, it is working. Okay, so a pretty unilateral consensus from all the people I spoke with who are good at painting or professional painters was that the paint removers now, they just suck. They took out all the ingredients that made them great. So they're weak. You gotta find out ways to prep them. So if you switch it around with a wire brush, it actually helps uh, reapply the stuff over the old layers and new layers just like this. And it actually helps get it done. And then I used a pressure washer to get that stuff off because that'll actually help remove some of it off in, in term get it as clean as possible. We're using Rust-Oleum self-edging primer and Rust-Oleum high performance enamel to paint this boat. This is the process. After we clean the hole and prep it with uh, a 50-50 uh, white vinegar and water mix, and then again with naphtha to get off all the impurities, we go ahead and we spray it with a self-edging primer. We go up and down, just like you see, and that allows us to apply it and over the seams while it's still wet so you don't see any gross seamage. If you do have any distortions like that, you'll want to do a second coat. All right, so I got this primered. I primer most of it at night. I just primer this last little bit right here during the day because it was the only time I could do it. Like finally I got no wind today. So there's like dead calm, perfect day, which means, you know, I can actually do something in the sunlight, but I have to buck two new rivets. I knew some of these were not the greatest. Like. I was asking my son, are these good? And he's like, yeah, they're good. And I was like, those don't look good. Those don't look like they're gonna hold. And so two of them actually came up while moving the boat. So sure sign that they were gonna fail, but we're gonna epoxy primer this with a slick coating. So when that happens, we just, we don't want any loose rivets. This, because the self edging primer acts as a sealant on the top, people miss this step, you have to scuff it with a scotch Brite pad before you paint it. And this is fully dry, it's been dried for a few days now. So we're gonna go ahead and scuff it and then prep it with uh, naphtha. And then we're gonna paint it. One thing that Chris told me during this process is that self etching primer, though it's probably the best thing you can do DIY for a primer like this, it seals once it dries. And you gotta re-scuff it up with a scotch Brite pad, not a sanding, uh, piece of paper. A scotch right pad specifically would do a much better job of just scuffing up the surface without actually removing too much of the primer. And this is a common practice done in a lot of boat fabrications for anything going on a hull like this. We are using like Crown Camp Fuel, which has naphtha in it. And according to Chris, is a true like oil and dust remover. And so that's what we use to pretty much do the whole hull. The paper towels didn't work out too well though, so we had to go to a microfiber cloth. And I would recommend just getting a ton of microfiber cloths if you're gonna paint a boat. You're gonna need them and you're gonna burn through them. They'll eventually soak up too many contaminants and get too dusty and they'll be useless. You have to throw them away. You can't just keep reusing the same thing. Oh. 
Now that we've got that newly scuffed primer all free of the dust and contaminants, we can start to paint it. And we are using Rust-Oleum Professional Grade High Performance Enamel. This stuff is awesome. And more importantly, the spray nozzle is awesome. It's a really nice thick coat on there. Does very good. We're gonna go ahead and give three coats per side, including the front and the back. You wanna seam up and down while the paint's still wet, just like with the primer. We got a problem, we gotta flip this thing around in the shade, or it's gonna have problems for fucking over here. see I tried to catch it but there's just spots here where they're not going to cure well it was the sun you cannot paint this in the sun so I, I painted this I got cocky because there's I mean I got excited because there's no wind and I was like no wind and so I came out here and I forgot the sun screwed it up also it's the wind and the sun screw up paint jobs with the sun so I, I put this in the shade the little shade I have I have like a super small window but you can see satin spots inside the gloss you can see it and it'll, it's gonna forever look like crap. I couldn't believe it was happening. It was, it was, I was like, why is this happening? It's, you know, it's, it's painted correctly. It's smooth. There's no distortion from like old paint or old primer. And so I think what screwed me over really bad last time on my other side of my boat was just the sun. Totally effed me. So what I gotta do now is I won't let, I don't have a whole hour to let this dry because it says recoat within an hour and you need to recoat within an hour. But the longer you let, the more the initial paint cures i'm just not gonna have that time it's gonna have to be within a half hour and then i have somewhere to be at one so the plot thickens for the front and left side or right side i don't know it's the left side it's the left side last coat let's get it done All right, came out pretty nice, pretty glossy, pretty glossy. One spot pulled that I didn't catch and it was conveniently right here where the sun was, I don't know. I didn't catch it. One spot, I put a decal over it, but everything else looks nice. I'm doing uh, it's good. The paint at least needs to be warm, like, now at least it's con it's contingent. I mean, if it's cold, it's not the greatest. Especially if you're painting cold weather, you want at least warm paint to have a chance. And then we'll be on to bigger and greater things like. So you can see there's like those little pit marks and that's just from me being too overzealous with the grinder because I was so tired of the paint that I just didn't have the knowledge I had now to get all the stuff off and that's what I got from being you know over anxious so that'll forever show in the paint nothing we can really do about that a few more layers and we'll be good I love this paint. I love the nozzle. I love how well it puts the paint on the hull from the first coat all the way to the last. And it just looks wet. It looks good. 
And now it's just time to take off all the prepping material and let it dry. So this boat is gonna dry and cure for 24 hours. You really don't want to do anything on this paint for a full day. I just needed it done. It's done. There's too many gouges in here from where I messed up with a grinder in frustration trying to get the primer off. And so I'll just have to deal with that unless I really want to go through and like aluminum barrio coat it, which that is its own gigantic multi-day mess that I don't want to deal with. So, you know, I'm quite happy with this. I think it came out pretty clean can't complain really happy with how my boat turned out it had some similar issues with the hull but you know I did all that when I was like noobish it came out pretty good yeah pretty clean this boat I think came out the best because you know there's no hull degradation and I knew exactly what I was doing this time so the hull came out super clean like this is supposed to be my elite boat whenever I I finally clean it up paint the top here before I skin it down and do a few other things but this boat is I mean it's, it's prep for success it's just... so overall it's going pretty good everyone the next step we will be putting on the Gator Glide epoxy primer slash slick epoxy coating on the bottom it is rumored to be the greatest stuff and it better be because doing all this is a serious pain the paint job but I really want this one to be right and make its mark and be the pinnacle of what it needed to be when it should have been all those years ago that I'm now starting to come back and do this unfinished business. But I tell you, sometimes waiting and patience is everything because there's no way we would have made it turn out this way if we would have done it all those years ago. It is the right time to do this project right now. If you want to help support projects like this, check us out on patreon.com slash tbnation or simply download the app and look up Tiny Boat Nation or TV Nation, and we'll be there. Check out our store, tbnation.net, for everything you'll need to build a tiny boat, except for like the paint stuff. You can find this paint stuff at the hardware store for dirt cheap, yeah, but everything else, for sure, check out our store. Thank you much for giving us the motivation to do these things, and we hope to continue to build this community and grow it. Check out all my other videos and tutorials. They're all over the place. Check us out on Instagram. There's all kinds of videos on Instagram all the time, and TikTok too, but you know, Instagram mainly. See you guys.